So I first went to Iraq in 2008. I was actually there until 2009. Uh, when I joined the army, my unit was already over there. And I was on this thing called Rear D, which was a quick in-processing, out-processing phase for about a month. Um, and since my unit was already over there, I pretty much, from basic training, you know, I went to the 5th Engineers. They were already over there, so... I immediately pretty much went over there. I had a rapid training. And when I got there, I can remember that the heat, you know, stepping off that plane in Kuwait, the heat was so intense, it was literally like an oven. I know I was in Kuwait for, I think, two days. And then I flew on a Chinook to Alad, Iraq. Now, when I was in Iraq, there was a, my whole battalion was there. So there was, you know, five companies that were there and I was a part of one of the companies. Um, so there was a huge motor pool. We were a whole company of mechanics. So there was like 30 of us. Um, it included welders and truck drivers. You know, we had a distribution platoon. We had a maintenance platoon. We had a, like a special platoon that would be welders and the fleet of vehicles was humongous there was like uh, at least a hundred different types of vehicles that we maintained over there but uh, iraq was you know more developed than afghanistan when i went to afghanistan i was only there with one company and there was only eight of us mechanics and we were on a polish fob instead of an air force base which i was in iraq in iraq um it was, it, I was a part of the last surge over there, the last surge of troops that President Bush that gave the order to have this surge. Um, I know that between 2006 and 2008, Iraq was a very dangerous place to be in. Um, the insurgents over there really got um, going well on their tactics and, you know, the IED was born in Iraq and they used that very well. Uh, they were taking out a lot of us um, and it became a very dangerous situation. So that's why, you know, President Bush at the time wanted to have this surge was to hopefully end the war in Iraq. And it did end a couple of years later. But, um, you know, being a part of that surge was kind of a cool moment in history to be a part of. One of the main differences between Iraq and Afghanistan is Iraq is more developed. Afghanistan is, you know, more of a wild, wild west type of thing. Their structure over there, their whole government it was pretty much collapsed at the time and they were trying to rebuild it. But there was, like I said, there was groups that were fighting each other, local groups. Um, they had religious groups that were fighting each other. And then on top of that, we were there and other countries were there. And on top of that, um, where I was located was right pretty much on the border of Iran, which a lot of the terrorists, you know, would come from Iran. So they would use routes that were located next to us to get materials down to bigger cities like Kabul. We would see a lot of, you know, people trying to build up their houses out there. Um, the way that they make their houses is actually with water and dirt. Um, and it seems to work pretty well. I mean, the clots is what they call them. And the clot is actually a process that's very strong. It's kind of like concrete. I would also see a lot of farmers out there. Um, uh, they use those as sources of income. And they also use that to, you know, just like we have here in America, they use farmers and they have farms for their own personal use as well. Uh, there's a lot of farmers. Where I was, there wasn't any major cities. Um, Ghazni was a pretty big city, but it wasn't like Kabul or something. It was a lot smaller. There wasn't a lot of greenery um, unless you traveled up into the mountains more. Uh, where we were it was pretty dirty honestly um, 
It was very dusty. There wasn't a lot of sources of water. Um, they did have like wadis is what they call them, which is basically like here in Arizona, they have dry river beds that when it does rain, they do fill up, but uh, they don't have that much water over there. I don't think they really have plumbing. Um, you see a lot of people um, on the sides of the roads using the bathroom. Afghanistan has been at war for as long as they have been around. Um, it's a very strategic area that other countries need. Um, and they've been invaded so many times that they probably can't even count how many times they've been at war. Uh, not only from other countries, but within Afghanistan itself, there's different groups that try to control each other. Um, so each province is kind of like a territory and each of them are constantly at war with each other. Afghanistan is a fairly poor country. So a lot of the stuff that they do is basically homemade. They don't have things like McDonald's. They don't have Walmart. They don't have Amazon, you know, the stuff that we have here. Uh, they don't have in, in in that country so just to go to that type of environment is is a culture shock um, it is a third world country by all the aspects of a third world country including the poverty rate the unemployment rate is extremely high there's a lot of people just walking around doing nothing um, it's very weird to see that where there's just people standing around for no particular reason at all um, when you did go to the cities like when I went through Ghazni city I would see a lot of the same type of shops where they would have you know they'd the whole street would be selling one thing like oil but they would have eight or ten different vendors trying to sell the same thing at the same time the children over there looked confused that we were there they were comfortable with us for the most part but they didn't really trust us um they just wanted stuff from us so they every time we would approach them they would they would try to get like our pens and whatever we would give them candy food water um i know that we a few times have thrown out water to at least some of the checkpoints out there um, because some of those Afghan police and Afghan army soldiers, um, they don't have a lot either. Their police and army system is kind of corrupt. You can't fully trust them. I remember uh, driving uh, back to Fab Ghazni after a four day long mission. Um, and we were passing an ANA checkpoint. And I guess they thought that a vehicle born IED a VBID was approaching their checkpoint so they ended up firing on them and shooting everybody in the vehicle I'm not sure if that was um, like if they if they felt that they were under threat or if there really was a threat but you know driving past that and you see these bullet holes all through this vehicle and you know like I said we we heard the gunshots so it was directly maybe one mile in front of us i would say when this happened um it was actually pretty crazy to see that something like that like it puts a very realistic tone to the whole thing um i struggled with images of that for a while um that's the first time i've ever seen some kind of crazy stuff like that the scenery out there was you know kind of like here in Arizona it's mountainous there is deserts um, but where I was located we were more in the mountain areas um, they did have trees they had certain areas that had more trees than others because of the water a lot of it was open you could see for miles and miles I think the hardest thing to understand about how how it is over there and how that works over there um, with the whole IED threat is they can see the whole road from wherever they are and you're trying to see them from the road 
and it's it's a very difficult thing to do so anything that would look out of place we would go and check that out imagine looking through a looking through your window and looking at the road you can see the whole road but if you're on the road trying to look through that window you really can't see anything so that's the advantage that they had over us and it worked very well it's a very dangerous place to be in um, you're trying to fight an enemy that you have no idea who they are they could literally be anybody i remember a few times we were looking at signs of people being like people being the same person that would be at these scenes of ieds over and over um i remember we were looking for a guy named sketchers um because he wore sketcher shoes and we ended up finding this guy um later on a couple months later um and when they walked into his house he did have the shoes there and he had a whole bunch of materials for bomb making uh there's been a few times we've stumbled across ieds and we've ended up in a firefight around the same time so they do like to complex attack um, they know when we're stopped that they have quite an advantage on us because it's our safety over what's going on so we have to be safe uh, doing what we do and they know that if we stop we're going to look for something and once we start looking for something that's when they take advantage of that and they try to take these cowardly shots from farther away uh, try to deter us try to try to spook us into keep driving away and that'll lead us into a different IED um, sometimes they would have more than one so they would have a fake one and then a real one I've seen it before where they have made a stop you know we made a stop because we think we found something they start shooting we go forward and then we have to stop again because we think we found something again um, it was a chaotic mess over there and you can talk to any of the vets out there and they'll pretty much tell you the same thing that this is a wild wild west in Afghanistan.